Hello, Year 7. So before we begin our lesson on descriptive writing, I'd like you to um, click on the link below and complete the retrieval quiz. It'll only take you a few minutes. Off you go. Hello, Year 7. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to read the section in the middle and I want you to highlight and annotate any language devices you can identify in this section of the text. Okay, so it says, the sprawling streets cry out incessantly as veiny cracks puncture their surface like the wrinkles of a forgotten elder. Once you've highlighted the language devices, I'd like you to give yourself a challenge and decide which is the most effective device and why. You've got about three minutes, off you go. Okay, so let's have a little look at this together. So when it says the sprawling streets cry out, I can see um, a personification here. and um, It's almost like the desperation. Um, the fact that they're sprawling streets as well. We've got some um, alliteration there to show really like how um, spread it is. It's almost kind of slowing down the vocabulary so you can appreciate the pain it's in. Um, as veiny cracks puncture their surface. So the fact that it's veiny, um, it, the cracks that are there, it's given us those verbs as though it's almost um, affected it, it on purpose. And again, it's um, personification as well, the fact that they are veiny. And then we've got a simile, um, like the wrinkles of a forgotten elder. And again, it shows you how um, aged the uh, the road is the root, um, perhaps that it's been there for um, a long time and it's been a route that nobody ventures down. So in the last couple of sessions, we've learned how to create versatile openings to use pathetic fallacy in our opening paragraphs. And now I want us to move on to, from the opening to, what would you then focus on? And really, it's character. So what I want us to learn today is to develop a versatile character using extended vocabulary. Now we have developed versatile opening paragraphs, ones that would fit for anything. Now we're gonna look at a character that could be used in multiple images or tasks. And we're gonna do the same thing we did last lesson where we are extending our vocabulary and using words we wouldn't normally use. Uh, to aspire to move on to the higher level uh, skills, I want you to go from developing a character to crafting a character. And we've talked about that word craft before, haven't we? Which just, it means not just building up a character piece by piece, but almost like an artist. You're thinking about every aspect of your character. You're thinking about their background. You're thinking about their past. You're thinking about any trauma they've suffered. And you're really making that character three-dimensional and what we call rounded, so that then it becomes more realistic for the reader and therefore more interesting. Okay, so I'd like you to read through um, your description that you um, produced from the last activity. Um, and I want you to complete your um, progress counter. So as you can see, it's coloured in and it's got a variety of different success criteria. And I want you to think, did you use those particular ones? And then next to um, your grid, I would like you to also put down your evidence um, of those particular specified success criteria. Um, so for example, the fact that it says, um, I've used a cyclical structure by referring to my opening um, and in my closing. So if you look at the red, it says here, as the morning sunlight peers curiously through, so we can see how it's talking about the sunlight here. And then if we look at the end of the extract, it says, as the evening sunlight crawls back below. So we've got that nice, clear cyclical structure. Also, if you look in the black boxes, it's writing down the example of those. Um, also, please look at your targets from the last activity that we did as well, um, so that you can complete any boxes, um, so you can focus on any of those boxes that you haven't completed. Okay, you've got about five minutes. Off you go. Okay, so I want you to consider um, paragraphing. And I want you to remember these um, tips that will really help you to form clear paragraphs. So um, top tip. So you always start a new paragraph for a new topic, a new person, a new time or a new place. Um, you can have a one sentence paragraph to say something shocking or powerful. 
Um, you can have a long or a short paragraph and vary the pace of your writing to keep it interesting. Um, and you can also have a journal sentence which links the last paragraph to the next one as well. So it makes a nice clear link. Um, we're going to read the extract and I want you to consider where you would place your paragraphs. OK. A woman looks out from a bus, looking over a woman sat talking on her phone. Her eyes are wrinkled and tired from the busy day, her hair shining with the day's grease. She frowns. Will the bus ride ever end? At the other end of the bus, a man stares at his phone, helplessly, alone. OK, decide where you're going to put those um, paragraphs. Remember to refer to the um, tips that are on the left hand side of the screen and give yourself about three minutes. Off you go. OK, so you can see here how we've paragraphed um, our work and it should be very similar to yours. So we've kept this one, um, which is ta all talking about the same aspect. It's talking about one female looking across at another female and it, everything in there links to what they were talking about. So a woman looks out from a bus looking over at a woman sat talking on her phone. Her eyes are wrinkled and tired from the busy day. Her hair shining with the day's grease. She frowns. Then we've got a real change because then there's got a new topic here. Will the bus ride ever end? So we've got that rhetorical question. And again, when we said about a one sentence paragraph, it's something powerful. It's something shocking. Um, so again, it's powerful because it feels that you know they're exhausted from what's happened in that day. And then we've got at the other end of the bus. So again, we can see that topic has changed. A man stares at his phone helplessly alone. And we've got that one word sentence but it's again it's still linking to the man so it still remains within that same paragraph okay so on the following four slides and um, there are extracts that need to be divided by paragraphs and you're going to use the same skills that we used in the previous slide okay so remember um tip top that's always a really clear one that gives you a clear idea of paragraphing so um annotate um your um, extract by two forward slashes um, and annotate the reason why you would paragraph at this particular point. So is there a change in time? Is there a new person? Is there a new topic? Is it a different place? OK, so on each paragraph, spend between um, three to five minutes on each one. OK, your time starts now. Off you go. OK, well done. So now what I want you to think about is the image that you've got on this particular slide. Um, what would you focus on in this particular image? What are you really drawn towards? So I want you to have a look at this image. I want you to annotate it. Think about what you're drawn towards. Um, what details could you add? What's suggesting via this particular image? You know, what might have happened? What might be going to happen? Um, so annotate your um, image and then we're going to come back and share some ideas. OK, so I've done something very similar with this image on this slide. However, you can see it's not directly from this image. It's what's suggested. So as the morning sunlight peers curiously through the bus windows, the engine splutters and coughs into ignition. Silence roams the aisles as the tattered seats hold only the ghosts of yesterday and the heady mixture of excitement and despondency. Passengers and baggage. This is all we are. So in this particular paragraph, it's given a really clear overview. It's talking about the bus as it comes to life um, at this point and what's happening in that bus at that time. Like a baby's breath, the doors burst open. So now we're going to a new place. So we're going to start a different paragraph. And we've got a nice use of simile as well. So it's almost like there's something new, something exciting, something quite vibrant. Beside the door, an old man shuffles steadily through, and this is the beginning of our our specific detail. Um, again, we've got a new person that's been introduced, so we'd start a particular a new paragraph at this particular point. Okay, well done. So now what I want you to think about is 
image that you've got on this particular slide. Um, what would you focus on in this particular image? What are you really drawn towards? So I want you to have a look at this image. I want you to annotate it. Think about what you're drawn towards. Um, what details could you add? What's suggesting by this particular image? You know, what might have happened? What might be going to happen? Um, so annotate your um, image and then we're going to come back and share some ideas. OK, so what I'd like you to do um, with the image that you've already annotated previously is I'd like you to produce um, three paragraphs um, linked to what's suggested by the image. So remember, your first paragraph is going to be quite detailed. Um, it's going to bring in the uh, the bigger image. You're going to bring in the, uh, the weather, for example. Um, the second paragraph will be a one sentence paragraph. And the third paragraph is when you're going to bring in another uh, person, another character, a different focus. Um, see if you can use any of the transferable phrases from the previous activities um, and incorporate them into your writing. You've got about 10 minutes. Off you go. Good luck. OK, year seven. So what I'd like you to do now on the activity you've just completed, I'd like you to use a different colour and I'd like you to add to your progress counter. Um, so some of the criteria you might have met again, which is absolutely fantastic. However, some of the blanks that you had previously, you now might have met those that criteria. So if you have, can you colour it in a different colour? And then can you also write down the example of where you've used that? So um, I've got a little example on this particular slide. Um, and then if you go on to the next slide, it's got another example for you to use. OK, and then if you've still got some blanks, I want you to remember those for tomorrow's activity to see if you can incorporate those um, in that particular activity. You've got about three minutes. Well done, Year 7.